Today, Telefox will be teaching you how to set up a Windows server. So let's begin. Now, assuming that you already know how to set up a basic virtual machine to prepare for Windows Server. If you don't know how to do that, definitely look it up online. There's a lot of tutorials on YouTube and on Google that will help facilitate you setting up your virtual machine for the Windows ISO installation. So let's begin. All right. So once we start loading up the ISO, we're going to begin the configuration process. It's very similar to installing a Windows desktop experience. And this is the GUI installation. So we are going to be using the GUI to install. So essentially you would select your language, your region, and then your keyboard type. Fairly straightforward. And then you just install. This is going to be on a virtual machine. So the hard drive I know for sure is completely empty and it will not affect any kind of secondary partitions or data on another hard drive. From here, we want to select the data center valuation and desktop experience. If you do not select the desktop experience, it will not contain the graphical user interface. So just be aware of that. If you're good with commands, PowerShell, and you know how to set up a server without using a graphical interface, then the desktop experience will not be for you. For this case scenario, we will select the desktop experience and then click on next. The next bit of information is the license agreement with Microsoft. You make sure that your RT department reads every single license agreement that you have with your vendors, especially Windows servers. So once we go through that, we go ahead and click on accept and then click on next. Here you could either do an upgrade to an existing server or you could do custom. We're going to select custom. This drive, as I said, is completely empty. So we'll use this empty drive and then select next. Now the installation process is started. Windows Server will install on your hard drive and then you will be able to configure the basic settings such as a static IP. So we'll get back to that once the installation process is completed. Please note that it usually takes up to 5 to 10 minutes. Alright, the installation process is complete and now we want to remove the ISO or installation tool and restart the server. Then we could start the configuration process. Now that the server is installed, we want to go ahead and set the administrator password. Generally, you want your passwords to be at least 12 characters with an uppercase and a lowercase letter, one number, and one special character. For this password, I have already designed a strong administrator password, so I will enter that now. Once we set up the password, it will allow us to log in for the first time so we can deploy some services. We want to go ahead and click on Control Alt Delete to unlock the screen. Once we're at the login screen, go ahead and enter in the password. And this will set up the user profiles for the first time. From here, we want to deploy the Active Directory services along with the DNS services. And then you want uh, DHCP, so that way all computers connected to this domain will get an automatic IP address. For the networks, do we want to allow this computer to be discoverable by other PCs? For now, we are going to click Yes. Now the next step, we want to assign a static IP address for the server. So what we want to do is ping an empty IP address on our scheme. And this will be 10.0.0.145. And as you can see, the destination is not reachable, which means that this IP address can be assigned to the server. To assign a static IP to a server, 
It's fairly straightforward. You could do this on Linux systems and Windows systems as well. You just click on your network icon and you want to change your network and internet settings. So I used IP config to find out my default gateway, which is 10.0.0.1. This is the IP scheme that we want to use, and we just want to change the IP to 145 at the end. Show you how to do that. So, once we open up the network status, we want to go ahead and click on Change Adapter Options. Then we want to double click the Ethernet Network Adapter, and then we want to do Properties. Click on Properties. We of course want to uncheck Internet Protocol version 6 because it won't be used on a lot of enterprise business networks. Then we want to go ahead and double click on Internet Protocol version 4. From here we want to assign the static IP address of 10.0.0.145. And then the following subnet mask. This subnet mask corresponds with my personal network. Your network subnet mask might be different, so take note of that. Then you want to go ahead and add your default gateway. For our case scenario, our default gateway is 10.0.0.1. And then you want to go ahead and click on OK once we assign the DNS servers. For now, we will use Google as the DNS server, so 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. Then we want to click OK. And as you can see, the internet access is available, and it's been assigned a static IP address of 10.0.0.145. Generally, in a business setting, you want to set up your domain controller and your Active Directory system before you connect any other devices. We click on Manage, and then click on Add Roles or Features. From here, we go ahead and read the wizard, and it just provides us information about how we should set up our network. Click on Next, and then select role base or future based installation. From here, we could either select a virtual disk or the physical server from the server pool. We have no other servers connected to this network, so we're going to go ahead and select the first selection, which is select a server from the server pool. This is the only server that we have currently now. All right, as I said, we want to set up three basic things. The DNS server. The DHCP server. And the Active Directory domain services. Then we click on Next. We leave the features as default. Click Next. This information will be guided information to provide you how you should set up your DNS server along with your DHCP server and Active Directory. Select Next and then click on Install. This process may take up to five minutes. Once the process is completed you want to go ahead and click Close for this window and then you should see some flag notifications. You want to click on the notifications and then complete the final post deployment configuration process. So for the DHCP server, we're going to go ahead and click on complete DHCP configuration. We want to commit this specific server to have DHCP server rule. And then we click on close. Next, we want to click on notifications and promote this server to a domain controller. 
Go ahead and click this option. Let the process go through some loading. And generally you want to select New Forest because we do not have an existing domain controller. For this domain, we could name it whatever we want. For this case scenario, we will keep the Telefox Corp. LA. Dot local. So this means that Telefox Corporation is in the LA location. And it's based in the local top level domain. So you will accept these changes. Click on next to verify the domain. Now from here it will ask you a few questions about the specified domain controller capabilities. We will leave this as default. You do want to make sure that you add a directory service restore mode password just in case things need to be restored and the server goes down and you need to bring it up and running on a different hardware or server. So, we will go ahead and create the password now. After we create a strong password with at least 12 characters, we go ahead and click on next. As you can see, we have a warning at the top that says this delegation for the DNS server doesn't have a parent zone. We're going to click on create DNS delegation. Once we click on next, it will verify the NetBIOS domain name. So as you can see, the domain name NetBIOS is Telefox Corp. Click on next to accept the name. From here, we could specify where we want to save our database folder, our log files, and system volume folder. We will leave these locations as default. Click on next. Now it's going to give us a review process of our domain Active Directory services, along with our domain controller name, fully qualified domain name, and the NetBIOS name, along with the type of forest functional level. So for this server, it's the Windows Server 2016. If you installed a different version of Windows, it will state it here. And then we just click on Next. All right, so we went through a pre requisite check. Everything passed. Now we could click on install. If your server and prerequisite check did not pass, please look online and look for Windows Server documentation to find out how to fix such errors. The computer and server will want to restart, so we will go ahead and click on close and let the computer restart. Now that the server is restarted, we want to enter in the password and then log into the system. So as you can see, Telefox Corp is the domain and then we're logging in as administrator. If you had other administrators on this device under different usernames, you would be able to enter it here by using Telefox. Actually, you would click on other user. You would do Telefox Corp backslash. And then the username. For this case scenario, we do not have any other usernames created. So you will log in as administrator. All right, now your server is up and running for your business. You have your Active Directory and Domain Controller, which controls and facilitates an area where you could verify your credentials of all computer users in one central server location. Then you have your DNS server, which allows them to get a domain name service from the internet. 
And then you have your DHCP server as well, which helps delegate IP addresses automatically to devices on your network. So that is it for this video. We are not yet done with configuring this server, and we shouldn't add any users to this domain until we set and assign appropriate group policies and have appropriate organizational units. But until then, we'll see you on the next video. Please don't hesitate to contact Tully Fox for all of your consulting needs. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. You have a good afternoon.